people telling them you can't do this or you have to do it this way. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot that you can do with comics, and we don't we don't want to be held back. So, I also think Image is going to have a great year with oh, yeah. I mean, the, the Brian Vaughn uh, thing that was announced, and what was the other thing that was just done? Jonathan Ross by yeah, 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 and then the other thing that I know is huge that's coming out. I mean, Image and Mark Miller and Dave Gibbons, Mark Miller, and uh, yeah, has the year announced any more? <laughs> And other ones no, that you will be, pretend else. you oh, yeah, just heard some fatal. amazing news. Fa but you don't know what it is, F Fatal. But you're seeing yeah. a lot of Marvel and DC uh, guys starting to come over, starting to realize, wait, I get more freedom. I wonder and, why. And ultimately, I can do what I want, and uh, it's, it's more satisfying. So it's nice to see some of these guys make the jump. Well, you, you can't have The Walking Dead at... You know, you can't, it's, it's not yours, you know. Like, creator own means that if you have a big hit, it's also, it is your responsibility, but you also have the potential to make the money off of mm. it and control the property. And if, if you don't want lunch boxes made with your character on it, they don't have to have it. I, I pitched uh, to seven different Vertigo editors over, over five years. And uh, if they would have accepted, that book would have been dead and gone. And it wouldn't have been mine. Mm. Uh, so, you and know, Rob might not have been drawing it, right? Yeah, oh, Rob definitely wouldn't have been drawing it. So I owe all those seven editors, you know. Talk How many of those editors are, are still working? Yeah. A few of them are. Well, I'll catch. A few of them. Uh, but yeah, I, I got very lucky with every editor who said no to that and joined the, free, uh, the, the creator of Rob. And the same is true. I mean, uh, Walking Dead was pitched to Dark Horse. And oh, they turned it? it down, yeah. Mm. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then they tried to get it back. Uh, there was a question over there. I thought I saw a hand go up. No? Uh, yeah? Thank you. five complete pages. You know, you don't want to go overboard. Issues? Pages? No, just kidding. Uh, you know, you don't want to go overboard and do like a complete issue unless you're going to do that anyways because that could cost a tremendous amount of time and money. But Image also wants to see what the final product is going to look like. So, uh, a, you know, a good compromise is do five finished pages. But I, I would also say that, you know, what, one thing that supremely qualifies you to be an image creator is to have self-published because... Robert Kirkman, self-published sure. Battle Pope. Um, Richard I, I self-published Hip Flask and, and was approached by the two Eric's to, to bring it to Image. Uh, did you happen to self-publish anything, John? Why, I had my own small press. There you go. In the back room? Or? Yes. Yeah. I had uh, NGD boards. <laughs> <laughs> so, I worked there. I'm just saying. I had a <laughs> but, but, I, but I don't say self-publish in order to, you know, to, to get an image gig, but what it, what it means is you'll acquire the experience and you'll know what you gain from image. Um, and thanks to a wonderful book published by uh, Richard over there, I learned how to letter. Um, uh, available right. at my booth. <laughs> <laughs> comic book letter in the Comic Craft way. Um, featuring the Elephant Man. Maybe featuring Hip Flask, yes. Um, um, you know, like I learned how to letter, I learned how to do pre-press, like I learned how to do marketing, I learned how to do all those jobs so that now, when I come to Image and when I need something or I need help, like I know who to talk to and I know how to talk to them and I know what to ask for. You, you learn the process of actually making Sure, something. and you know, one of the things that impresses me about the difference between, for instance, Image Comics and Dark Horse Comics, you know, Dark Horse Comics is like 120 people. How many people at uh, Image right now? It's 13. 13 at the central offices. <laughs> and you know what? Big round of applause yeah. for our support system, which includes Sarah. And Todd here, big round of applause. Yes. Because, you know, when you've been a self publisher, you know how hard you have to work for one book. And um, how many press releases do you think you write in a week, Sarah? Plenty. Plenty. <laughs> a lot of press um, releases because before. every book <laughs> needs attention. But um, as an image creator, you have to do a lot of your own promotions and store appearances and, 
you know, book your own tables and so forth, because Image is not Marvel. It's not DC. It's, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a corporate machine like Disney or Warner Brothers behind it. So they they run a, a lean, mean machine. Um, and as an image creator, if you've self-published, you understand that. You know, but there's a, there's been in the past creators that are, are used to sort of being spoon-fed that, that don't understand that image can't do that. Um, so you really have to be ten times as strong a creator to be an image as you do at Marvel or DC because nobody's writing your monthly check and nobody's um, uh, going to push your title like you do. So that, that, I would say, is as much a part of the package as being able to produce five pages or an issue. You know, having that sort of determination and um, being able to put in the, the hours, really. Well, and, and who's going to push your, your creation better? And who's going who's to represent your creation better than yourself, I think? You know, if it's yours, then you're invested in, in, in that way mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it, you're not just kind of clocking in. So I, I think m most of the people that are with Image are there because they want to do that. Uh, they put more, like, like Josh was saying, he puts more time into it, it because it's an image book, because it's creator-owned. Does that right. answer your question? Okay. Any, uh, any more questions? We've got plenty of time. Keep going. And that's why you should support creator-owned books. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Buy them. At our booths at the Arizona <laughs> show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, and, and you know, if you're flipping through previews and you don't, and you're seeing books that aren't at your retailers, ask them because they might not ha be ordering those books. Mm. They might think you only want Marvel. So you have to talk to them about it. And it is, you know, I've, I've got a lot of sympathy for retailers because it's really difficult to, when you think of a retailer, he's making a gamble with uh, money he commits to to make money each month. That, so, that he cannot get back. Yes, that he cannot get back because it's it's uh, direct sales, so it's sold directly to the retailer, and he needs to make his money. And you know, um, retailers are, are really happy when a 52 comes along and the first printing sells thousands of copies, and people can't get a hold of it. But when second printing sit on the shelf, they're eating it. You know, so. Um, In fact, you know, everything sitting on the shelf, yeah. they're eating. Well, yeah. So, but but if you, as a customer actively seek out creator-owned books and seek recommendations on, on creator-owned books from retailers. And sometimes the best person is actually the assistant at a store because they're the ones that have the time to read the books and make recommendations and they got into the store because they wanted to read comics for free. So those are the, those are the guys to ask. But unless you uh, seek a book out, you know, they won't know to order it and they won't know whether it has any strength or legs or if there's any interest. And, and one of the things that frustrates me in some of my local stores is that they will order low on a new creator-owned book and then wish they'd ordered more. But because of the economy, we have to sort of print to order. So, you know, if you're placing your order in, in advance and if you're sort of uh, backing creator-owned books, it's better for everybody. It really is better for everybody. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's tough for the retailer because they're taking a chance on an unknown title. Mm. And sometimes with new creators, a completely unknown team. So, you know, they're taking a chance, they're putting their money out there, but, y you know, the fans have to also help with that because it's, it's really all of our responsibility as a community to keep comics happening. And, and if you like comics and you tell your retailer about it, they, they love that. They, they want the feedback. Mm. You all would be uh, probably shocked and appalled at how low the orders for the first issue of The Walking Dead was. Yeah. Uh, well, if you can do the math, like there's a reason that you can buy it for you know 800 bucks on eBay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, but it was a situation where Kirkman wasn't very well known, and it was a black and white book, and it was about zombies and not superheroes, and retailers took that shot and ordered uh, what they thought was you know accordingly and. It was more about fans and readers saying, no, we want this, we want more of this, that kind of made re you know, retailers order more mm -hmm. and order more and order more. And you know, now it is what it is today. Oh, it's shoe number one. How many printings of shoe number one? We, well, we did 
four printings of two number one plus we did the Walking Dead flip book. So, oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. So in the end, I think there were probably what was initially ordered at like a 5,000 copy book ended up printing in 55,000 copies. Wow. Or something preposterous like that. And it was because people wanted it, but you know, no one knew, including me, uh, you know, including Image. And that sucks. Like, it, it, like, it's, there's a systemic flaw to how comics is set up. Like, comics is bad set up, bad backward. And it, and it really does suck, and it's unfortunate. But the reality is that it's sort of what we're stuck with right now. And what that means is that you now, as a reader or a fan of these books, if you want them to exist, I'm sorry, but uh, you now have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to talk up the books you like. Yeah. Like, it, 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 yeah. like it's, it's not... Like when I talk about, I talk about this way too much because I'm borderline obsessed with it. Um, but, but like, it's not fair at all. Like, you should be able to just read your book and then enjoy it and then go buy it, you know, four weeks later. But you can't do it. You can't do it and be a fan of comics and expect the books you like to stick around. Can I just ask anybody reading books digitally on Comicsology? Raise your hand. So not that many. So you, most of you are buying books printed on paper, right? Yeah. Do any? How many of you pre-order your books? You have a question. I think there's a chance it could actually help, but this is my opinion, and I know other people have different opinions of, about that, but I think because of the thing that we've been talking about, about how retailers aren't sure about these number ones, they, it's an unknown thing, you know, unknown titles, unknown creators, or, you know, they, they're a little more conservative with creator on books mm -hmm. if it's online and so, you know suddenly that first issue is sold out and you can't find it at your retailer anymore you can go online and find it mm -hmm. so you can read that first issue and then you can go back to the store and get the second issue um so i i mean i think it's just another and it, chance and to it never it goes out of print digitally that right that's the real advantage right and I'm sure we've all had stories. I mean, I, I get it mul uh, multiple times where people have discovered to, uh, you know, they downloaded the first issue for free, and here they are buying the trades now. Mm -hmm. So it, it certainly has worked out, and we went day and day, and, you know, we didn't see any sort of dip. And it's nice because I even meet people who said, you know, yeah, I, I downloaded illegally. I didn't want yeah. to, but that's how I read my comics. And now I don't mind spending, you know, a dollar ninety nine and when I when I read, uh, legally. When I lived in London, I did most of my reading of comics on the train. Um, so I would have to go on the train to the store for Bin Planet in London at lunchtime, half an hour to get there, half an hour back, and then I'd read the comics on the train on the way home. Um, and if I knew with an iPad, I wouldn't have to make that journey to the store. I would download them as I'm waiting for the train get on the train, read them on the train, on my iPad, not have to carry so many around. So, and I think that's a readership, you know, um, I live in Los Angeles, people don't take the train. But in cities like San Francisco, London, anywhere where there's a lot of commuting, um, I saw it in New York last year. Um, I was sitting on the subway and somebody opposite was reading a comic on his iPad. And I think that that's the audience. Now that the iPad is big enough, bigger than the smartphones, which was a battle to read them, there's a whole bunch of people who will download a run of comics to read on a train journey. And, you know, I used to commute an hour outside of London, but I was getting on a train with people that were commuting from Wales to London, which is three hours. And, and those people read comics just like everybody else. So.